Um, so I want to specifically talk to you about 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. I think those were kind of easy. Um, and again, you just had to write the inequality. All right, so let's take a look quickly at number 18. Now, some of my kids earlier said this. They said that x is greater than or equal to negative 1 and x is less than or equal to 4. And I think that's okay to write it that way. However, that's not the best answer. All right, that is definitely not the best answer. All right, the best answer would be to write it with, uh, as a compound statement, meaning negative 1 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 4. That's the best way to write. Now, if for whatever strange reason you decided to write this on the test like this, I, I, I wouldn't be upset. But for those of you guys who want to do a better job, this is how you actually write the final solution uh, when it's an and statement. All right? And it's easy to kind of remember because, again, you write from small to large. You start at negative 1 and you end at what? And you end at 4. All right, is everybody okay with that? All right. Now, just in case, let's look at 19 now. All right. So for question 19, all right, I would like for you to start at what number? Negative 3. Now, that's less than x, which is very good. That's the answer. All right, that's the answer on that. Anybody have any issues with that? All right, now let's take a look at number uh, 20. Now, this is an OR statement. All right, this is an OR statement. All right, so you're going to say that x is less than 0 or x is greater than or equal to 3. Now, there's no way to write that as a single inequality like we did in the other two problems. All right. Does anybody have any questions with that? All right. So now I just want to look at 22 because 21 is the same pretty much as 22. All right. So for 22, you would just simply write x is less than or equal to 3 or x is greater than or equal to 6. All right. Does anybody have any questions with that? Any questions? All right. Now is where I want to really concentrate on uh, 24 uh, through 27. So let's do that. Let's see how you guys did last time. A couple of these are kind of tricky, so I want to make sure you're good. All right, here we go. All right, for 24. All right. Now, again, for those guys who looked this up, that's good. All right, I, I really didn't show you how to do question 24 or 25. So I, I really um, was hoping that you took the time to just look the information up. You should have. All right, if you did that, you're on your way to being a great student. All right, I, I'm not expecting you to know how to do this. All right, so when you come to something you don't recognize, that's why I post the solutions. All right, and if you would have looked up the solutions, they would have told you to write this as an inequality, and then you would write this as the other inequality. And then you solve it separately. All right. Now, again, I'm not going to put this on the test. This is kind of like an algebra 2. It's a little bit more advanced, but it's really not that difficult. All you're doing is you're writing them as separate inequalities. 
So it'd be 3b plus 2 is less than 5b minus 6. And then you would say 5b minus 6 is less than or equal to 2b plus 9. That's what we're doing. Now, when you solve this out, you're going to subtract 3b and add 6. So 2b, so then you would say b is greater than 4. Then from there, subtract 2b and add 6 you'd end up with 3b is less than or equal to 15, so b is less than or equal to 5. All right? So now if you're greater than 4, less than or equal to 5, that means you're everything between 4 and 5. So to write this, again, that's kind of how I wish you could write it. All right, and I always tell kids, if you're having trouble, you can actually graph it on the number line itself. You can graph it on the number line and see. All right. Anybody have any questions with that? All right, let's just do one more. All right. So question number 25, I want you to rewrite it All right. as two separate inequalities. So you would write negative 2a plus 3 is greater than or equal to 6a minus 1. 6a minus 1 is greater than 3a minus 10. And you work it out from there. All right? So I have adding 2a, adding 1, now when I divide by 8, 1 half is greater than or equal to a which makes a less than or equal to one half. And then over here, subtracting 3a, adding one. So a is greater than negative three. So again, if you're greater than negative three, then less than or equal to one half. That's kind of the way I was hoping you'd write it. Any questions on that? All right, like I said, I, I'm not going to put that on the test. I think that's a little bit harder. All right, but it's something you can definitely do. Now, let's briefly look at question 26. Again, this one was the one that was tricky. All right, so let's see how you did on this. All right, so if I subtract 10m, I have negative 7 is less than 7m. Dividing both sides by 7, so m is greater than negative 1. Over here, or if I divide by negative 6, m is less than negative 6. All right, I did think this was, this one's not the one I was talking about. All right, come on, girls. Come on. Yeah, you're right. 27 is the tricky one. All right, so in this case, because it's an or statement, we're going from negative infinity to negative 6, and then from negative 1 to infinity. All right. Now that's correct. 27 is the tricky one. So everybody take a look quickly at Yes, I can go back. Yes, yes, yes. Good. All right. Wait, so you use the um, that sign to split the left side? Yes, yes. And exactly. And you use that sign? Well, and there's no symbol because it'll be between two. If you'll notice, this right here is your and statement. You with me? If you wanted to, we could write it as four to five, remember? Okay. Right, what was the other part of the uh, It just depends, interval notation. Yeah. All right, that's okay. 
Now, everybody take a look at 27. 27 wants the one that goes to the next one. <coughs> All right, so if we're looking at 27, I would have 5n is less than negative 15. So n is less than negative 3. Negative 3n is less than 9. So n is greater than negative 3. And this is an or statement. All right, so this is what I've been trying to try to, to help you better understand numbers. I'm, I'm trying to get you to read that and see if you understand what it's even saying. All right, and, and most kids do not. If I said, give me the numbers that are less than negative three or greater than negative three, you should be able to tell me, well, this is what they are. It's Say it. It's all of them. Yes, and therefore it would be parentheses negative three. Ben, what do you think? On the right. Tell him. Negative three. Say it again. Negative three. Negative three is the only answer? Well, it's less than a three or so. Uh, Jack, what do you think? Tell me. If I said, give me the numbers that are less than negative three or greater than negative three. Come on, girls, this is why you're having trouble. I'm asking you to listen. You're not concentrating. You're not answering my question. If I ask you, tell me, what is it? Give me, give me the numbers that are less than negative three or greater than negative three. <coughs> All of them. All right, so do me this favor. Give me a number that won't work. Say it. Negative three doesn't work. So it can't be all of them because <clears throat> negative three isn't less than negative three and negative three isn't greater than negative three. So Colin, almost correct. You hear me? Um, it's every number except negative three. Now, again, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to have you hear me say, give me the numbers greater than negative three or less than negative three. Oh, I see now. So it could be anything but what? It could be anything but negative three. All right? And again, that, that's a little bit more complicated. That's why I'm saying you've got to listen to the numbers that I'm talking about. If you're less than negative three or greater than negative three, it's basically anything. Except what? Negative three. Except negative yeah, three. but I didn't put a negative three like for the parentheses. But I, because we did the problem like this on number 15. Yes, we did. We did. Now, you see if you agree with me. It's negative infinity to negative three union negative three to infinity. Oh. That's what the answer is. Now, on some books, you're going to see it written like this. It's all real numbers, comma, n cannot equal negative three. That's another way to write it. Now listen, guys, I, I, I'm a little worried, all right? Some of you guys, I, I, you know, yesterday I said put your names on your homework and put your names on your homework, put your name on your homework, and four or five of you did not, all right? Right, Will? You didn't put your name on your homework, all right? You're not the only one. Make sure your name is on your homework, or where is it going? In the trash can. That's where it's going. It's not that hard. All right, now the other thing is, I'm looking around and some of you are distracted. Stop being distracted. If you are distracted, move your seat. All right, simple, move your seat. I'm going to move it for you. I never ever complain about where kids sit because I want you to be happy. I think it's easier when you're comfortable where you're sitting. But I'm not doing my job if you're distracted by where you're sitting. That's the same thing with eating food. I don't care about eating food. Just don't be distracted while you're eating food. Simple as that. If you want to sit next to your friends, don't make me move you. I don't care where you sit. All right? 
Now, today's lesson is kind of a review, all right, but it requires some thought. And this is why I say this is easy if you understand numbers. But if all you're doing is writing down information, it's not easy. That's why I'm trying to tell you, listen to what I'm saying. All right, listen to what I'm saying. Eventually, the numbers, it'll click to you, and everything will come together. But if it's not coming together right now, that just means you've got to practice more. All right? So now I'm coming around the room. Every day, I'm collecting homework. All right? I want to see the homework, and I want to make sure your names are on it. And some of you guys are not doing as much work, so I'm going to have to start penalizing you as far as, yes, some of you give me two and three sheets of paper with corrections. And some of you give me a paper on the front with answers. You're not doing your work. All right, don't expect your grade to change. Do your work. Yes, I'm not even going to check for your name. I'm just going to collect the paper, and if your name's not on it, when I go through it, it's going right in the garbage. And then you'll tell me I turn in my homework, and I'm going to say, yep, check the garbage. Did I get all your homework? Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, you did your homework today. Nice. All done, too. Hurry up, Will. I'm not waiting on you anymore. Let's go. No, no. All right. Let's see how we're doing here. Okay. Now, uh, tonight's homework, please. Let's look real quick. That was 5-5, five, five, and we are Bragdon. Here we go. Look up now. All right, here we go. If you want to head your paper, section 5-5, page 314, 1 through 29. You got it? All right. Here we go, 1 through 29. All right, and you can omit the word problems. All right, now earlier in the year, <clears throat> we took a test on solving absolute value equations and I would say most of you did horrible in that section. And I even retaught it on one of the lessons. And we did another 10 or 12 problems just to try to help you. Now we're going back to that, which makes it a third time, except we're adding a little twist. Instead of calling it an absolute value equation, they are absolute value inequalities. Absolute value inequalities. All right? Now, again, I'm going to try to draw something up here on the board. I don't want you to write down. I just want you to really concentrate on what I'm saying so I can, again, work with you on understanding numbers. All right? So just all you have to do is look up for a moment. All right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a number line. You do not have to draw this number line. All right? Because it's a point of emphasis that will help you understand absolute values if you understand the number line, all right? Now, I know everybody understands the number line, but I'm going to go ahead and write this out. 0, 1, 2, 3, and negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And does anybody remember if I said the absolute value of x is equal to 3, what are the answers? What number, if I take the absolute value, is going to be 3? Negative 3 or good. Thank you very much. Now, if you'd say louder, all right, we would be in good shape. All right, 100% correct. The answer to that is negative 3 or 3, because if I take the absolute value of negative 3, it's 3. If I take the absolute value of 3, it's also 3. All right, now I'm going to say this. What if I come down here and say, when is the absolute value of x less than 3? What? When it's a negative. What does that mean, when it's a negative? Like, uh, when x has to be the absolute value of x. The question is, the absolute value of what number is less than 3? Vivian, what is? 2 and on from there. I'm not sure what that means. To negative infinity? What do you think? Uh, like from zero to two. From zero to two. Anybody else? What do you think? 
Zero to two. What do you think? Anything less than three. So negative a million would work. Okay. The absolute value of negative one million is less than three. Agreed? Oh, wait, no, never mind. No, it's never mind. It's, it's just it's two to negative two. Uh, okay, so watch, watch. You're right, but not exactly. All right, because you're thinking. He said all of these numbers. Will, are you listening to me? Ben, you listening? Is that correct? Uh, yes. yes. Ben, you think so? Colin? I would say so. I'm asking because it's not right. So somebody jump in. Someone give me another number that's less than three that's not bolded and green there. 2.5. Yes, 2.9 what? 2.99. What about 2.999? What about 2.9 with 1,000 nines after it? Would that still be less than three? Yeah. Yes. That is why we put an open circle and we go this way. What else? Is that the final answer now? Negative. That's exactly right. So we can extend this all the way up to negative 2.99999. But instead of saying all those nines, we can just put an open circle. Now that is the answer. Come on, girls. I'm telling you. All right, right here. This is where I'm at. That's the answer. All right, so how did I solve this? Now watch. The answer is when X is less than 3 or when X is greater than negative 3. Does everybody see that? You agree with that or not? You can say no. You can say, man, you're doing a bad job today. All right, I, I want to know if I'm doing a bad job. If you understand it, then I'm doing a good job. Right, because they might have any issues with what I just wrote on the board. Okay, so now the question is, how do I go from here to here? Well, here's how simple an absolute value inequality is. Just like the last time, you write it without the absolute value, exactly the way you see it, with exactly the same sign. All right, so what am I saying? I dropped the absolute values, I drop the absolute value, and I just rewrite it as x is less than 3. Then after I write it the first time, when I write it the second time, I write it with absolute, without the absolute value, but I do what to the signs? You change the signs. You change the inequality sign, and you change the positive to a what? To a negative. All right, that's how simple this is. All right, it's very simple. All right, so again, I need you, and this is what I used to write for my, I'm going to show you an absolute value number line. An absolute value number line would look something like this. Instead of those being negative, they would be what? Now, why do I say that? Because now you can see that these numbers are less than three. Does everybody agree with that? At first, when you see negatives, all of them are less than three. But what your brain's not picking up on is the fact that the negatives are actually what? That is exactly correct. All right? Because remember, absolute value has to do with distance. Absolute value has to do with distance. All right? So now what I want to do is I want to grab a couple of these problems, and I want to see who was listening. All right? So I'm on number one, number two, number three. Now is where you're getting involved and trying to see if I did a good job. All right, so here we go. Number one, all right, any volunteer on number one? How do I set it up, Max? Uh, so you would take away the absolute value? Thank you, good. What would I write? A minus five is less than negative three. Is less, less than, than three. thank you. Now look, of course Max knows I'm giving him a hard time, but look, Max is listening. I know he's listening because he can repeat the information. Now let's see how focused he was. How do I write the next one? Uh, a is less than 8. A minus 5 is? Less than. Come on, tell him. Greater than what? Greater than negative 3. 
So that's the process. It's the third time now we're doing absolute values. You write it without the absolute value. Then you rewrite it a second time and you change the inequality and you change the value. Does everybody hear me? Now look, this is really basic from here. So from there, we can just solve this real quick and say that A is what? Less than eight. And over here we would say A is greater than two. So now I really want you to see what we're doing. Draw the number line. And I've got a two here and an eight here. And if I'm greater than two, and I'm less than eight, this requires a what? Uh-oh, and statement, right? That's an and statement. So my solution is, uh-oh, there we have it. That's my answer. Now, Alex, thank you very much. Okay, so what I did here, buddy, was, remember I just added five? Agreed? Don't worry. Don't worry. And then over here, added five again. Good. Always ask what? I try the next one. No. What? All right. Look up now. I, I'm saying I don't, I don't, I'm not thinking that's that hard. The rule you have to remember, rewrite it without the absolute value, and then switch the sign. All right. So let's look at number two. Kate. Tell me. I'm going to move you again. I'm listening. Loud and proud. U plus three is? Good job. Next. U. That's it. Good job. All right. Now look, everybody has that written down. And now some of you have to take a little bit longer to solve that equation. Shouldn't be that big a deal. All right. So Kate, from there I have what? U is less than 4. And then U is greater than? Yes, ma'am. Good job. Let's draw the number line to see what we're looking at. So tell me what to do. At negative 10, am I open or closed? Open, because it's not equal to. In which direction am I going? Yes, ma'am. Good job. And then? You're awesome. Good. Good, good, good. So, and? Exactly. And so our answer is anything between negative 10 and 4. Will Genuine. Does that make sense? Colin? Good. I don't think it's that hard. All right, now I need everybody to put a big star on number three. Everybody misses it the first time. Everybody. So if you think you know the answer, you're probably what? Right. Tell me what the answer is. Wait, it's just like right now. Just, you should look at it and say, well, this is obvious. What's the answer? Well, no solution. Why is it no solution? Um. When you ready to defend your position, Yes, you're defending it. Tell me why. Um, because, uh, oh, it can't equal a negative. Because hmm. it, it's oh. an absolute value. Say it. Yeah. What would you, say what you thought. What is a negative? No, the answer is it can't, it can't be a negative. But the question is, what the absolute value of what is less than negative 2? The absolute value of what is less than negative 2? Negative 3. No. Why? Because it's not 
Why? Because you can't get a negative after a positive. Very. That's what I want you to say. Look right here, guys. Please listen to me now. All right, because you're going to make a lot of mistakes. And you're gonna, when you're doing your homework, I don't want you to, when you come to this problem, I don't want you to work it out. Because you're going to get an answer if you're not paying attention. Is it possible for the absolute value to be less than a negative? No, because this is ultimately going to come out to be greater than or equal to zero. Is a number greater than or equal to zero going to be less than a negative? No. Do you agree? Yes. And also, I would support this because it, that's also lesser equals. Like it's also like an, it's sort of an equal sign as well. Exactly. So if you're wanting to think about it as an equal sign, I'm okay with that. All right, but you got to be careful because at some point it's going to be greater than or equal to, all right, a negative. So all right, we'll talk about that in a minute. Hold on. We'll talk about that in a minute. Right now, you can't be less than a negative if you're an absolute value. All right, that's why the answer is no solution. That's why the answer is no solution. All right, now I'm going to grab four, five, and six. All right, get busy. Number four. You should already have the answer. Yeah, you should. Emily, what's the answer? Somebody else besides it cancels out. Mr. Genowine. It would be no solution. Colin. Yes, no solution. No solution. Think for yourself. Don't let them influence what you're saying. Obviously, if I'm going around the room, that they must be all wrong. Wait, no, no, it's not because it's... It can be greater than... Whoa, 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 yeah, wait a minute. Go, it tell them. It can be greater than... It can be greater than a negative, but you can't be a little an absolute value. So what is the answer? I don't know the answer yet. Oh my goodness. What is the answer? Obviously. Allison, thank you. What is the answer? Yes, you do know. Come on. Carly, help me. What is the answer? Any positive number. Any positive number. So no negatives work? No. Why not? Negative one is greater than. Yeah, that's absolute value. <laughs> when is an absolute value greater than a negative? If I plug Always. zero in, does that work? No. Why? Zero plus two is two. The absolute value of two is two, so two is greater than negative two. Yeah. So what is the answer? What is the answer? Shh. Tell them. Any positive number? No. <laughs> ben, thank you. <laughs> All real numbers work. Yeah, that's a, that's right. that's what a positive number is. A positive number, it's all real numbers. Yep. Yes, yeah, so I was correct. That's not true. How? The answer is... Negatives are possible. If you take the absolute value of a negative, you get a what? Uh, a positive, and a positive is always greater than a negative. So the trick here is to understand if can you be less than a negative if you're an absolute value? No. When are you greater than a negative? Always. You have to listen to what I'm saying. When are you less than a negative? Never. When are you greater than a negative? Always. You're not limited to the positives. Not limited so, to the positives. It's kind of correct. You are kind of half. Right? On the half. So any positive All number reals. would work. Or a negative. All right. Number. So now we're back to normal. Number five. Let's go. Move it. Number five. I'm walking around the room. I want both equations. And then I want you to show it to me. Quicker, quicker, quicker. That's too slow. Where, where are you at? Did you switch the sign? Yes. You should write them out this way, like I do it, not how you do it. Write them separately. 
Good, good. You heard me. Erase it and do it again. Where are you at? Right side by side. Right down the middle. Right side by side. Let me see yours. Did you change the sign? Oh, 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 no, I did not. Let me see you. Wow. Ben got one right. Yo, coach. Let me see you. Who? Wow. Did it right. Amazing. Look how good I am. Wow, look at me. Let me see if I get into one. You probably did. I got a right coach. You got lucky. Why did I get lucky? Right, right? Probably not. It is. It just doesn't want to. Here we go. So again, listen, I don't want you, Miss Allison, I don't want you writing down. All right? I want you writing like I'm doing it. N plus 5 greater than or equal to 3. N plus 5 less than or equal to negative 3. Everybody should have that written down. Then from there, you're just combining. So N is greater than or equal to negative 2. N is less than or equal to negative 8. So now, you're trying to think to yourself, if I'm less than negative 8, greater than negative 2, are they running towards each other or opposite? Well, let's find out. Here we go. Here's negative 8. Here's negative 2. I'm greater than or equal to negative 2, less than or equal to negative 8. I'm right here. So now... We're going negative infinity to negative 8, union negative 2 to infinity. However, these, don't forget, because they're equal to, are the brackets. Come on, look at that. That's what your answer is. And don't get excited because you got one right. You should always get them right. Let's go. All right? Now, number six. Let's go quickly. Number six, finish it. All right, finish it up. Let's go. Come on. Good. Let me see yours. Where's yours? Where's you at? Faster. Wow. That's not us, is it? Okay, so listen. Hey, guys. Um, eyes up, though, real quick, just for a quick second. I don't care about where you sit at lunch. All right, here we go. Look right here. Listen, your job now is to finish 8 through 29. It took me too much time. All right? You got lots of work. Let's skip the word problems. Hey, that's not where you got that from. Yeah, you can skip the word problems. That's true. 